Welcome all someone. Here I speak about reincarnation a lot and how a lot of the Norse myths um, are about the process of reincarnation or so it was believed. Uh, and a lot of modern day people don't want to believe this, you know, these <laughs> you know, tough guys like, oh no, the Vikings believed in Valhalla, we die in battle, then we feast and fight for all eternity, till Valhalla. And okay, that's fine, you can believe that if you want to. Um, some of the sources do say that, that that was for sure a belief. But Valhalla was not even a thing until really late on in the Viking Age. So uh, the traditional Valhalla that we all know about was only a belief for a couple hundred years as an afterlife. But the belief in reincarnation we have had in the North for a couple hundred thousand years, probably even longer. So as you know, on this channel we don't just talk garbage like most other channels here on YouTube. Everything is based on the sources that we have. So in this video I'm going over all the sources that prove the Norse and other Germanic peoples believed in reincarnation, so there is no doubts in your mind. So first of all, all of our neighboring religions believed in reincarnation here in Europe. Reincarnation is not just an Eastern belief like many people think. Uh, the Celts believed in reincarnation, the Sami still, be still believe in reincarnation to a certain extent, uh, even the Greeks, if we go far back enough in time, Slavs, Romans, everybody believes in reincarnation if we go far back enough. So of course Germanic peoples uh, they did too, uh, because we're all part of the same Indo-European family, but um, anyway, on to the actual written sources. The oldest one first, there was a Roman historian called Appian, who uh, lived in the early 100s, and he wrote that the Teutons had no fear of death because they believed that they would be reborn. Plain and simple, clear <laughs> clear proof of belief in reincarnation. So the, the Teutons, as they were called, we're not sure. In some sources, the Teutons were just uh, one big tribe, originally from Denmark. Um, but in other sources, the word Teuton refers to all the Germanic tribes uh, as a whole. So we really don't know. Either way, the Teutons are Germanic peoples. And at this time in history, we were all pretty much an identical uh, people as far as language and religion goes. Later on in time in different areas and uh, when we spread out it, it developed into slightly different languages and beliefs but at this point when this text was written uh, it was all pretty much the same. But uh, this is very very early on in the history of the Germanic peoples. Um, so uh, next are some of the sources that come a little closer to the Viking Age. Uh, the most famous one is, yeah, we can call them the, the Sigurd cycle or the Niflung cycle poems or, or the Hel Helgeles, whatever. There are about 20 of our oldest dated poems that deal with the famous story of Sigurd when he kills the dragon and rescues the Valkyrie Birnhildr. You've all probably heard of that one. And all of these poems are littered with references to reincarnation. That's what it's about pretty much, especially uh, the, the first ones in the, in the series, the Helgiles as they're called. It basically follows the journey of Helgi and his lover dying and being reborn again in multiple uh, lives. Uh, so the belief in reincarnation, it just doesn't get any more clear than that. That's at least something that's very clear in our mythological sources that speak about it. Next are the sources uh, that come in a couple of very real sagas actually, sagas that are believed to be very historically accurate. Uh, we have Olav Saga Helga, when the chieftain Olav Geistadolf uh, dies and gets reincarnated as the Norwegian king Olav II. And this king was actually uh, one of the first Christian kings uh, of uh, Norway, but his people still believe that he was uh, Olav Geistadolf reincarnated. And uh, that story mentions that our people used to believe in reincarnation, but it's just old women's superstitions now. So this, uh, this takes place right around the early... Uh, um, 1000s uh, when he was born. So it was also a belief of our people that certain uh, birthmarks uh, we have actually to do with wounds that we were dealt in previous lives. In uh, Thorida Saga Radu, uh, Thorida has a mark on his arm where his father was wounded before he died. Uh, so this guy dies while his wife is pregnant and he actually comes back reincarnated as his own son, it was believed in this saga. Uh, another one, uh, Geitrex Saga, it speaks about a boy's marks like on his sides coming from when his uh, grandfather got his arms torn off. Um, 
So this guys is, is one of the ways we can also find out who we were in past lives. Uh, do you have any old family members who were wounded? Do you have any birthmarks that correspond to these? Uh, definitely something to look into, at least. Me, I have, <laughs> have too many of these uh, all over my back and everywhere. I think I probably came from violent past lives, but anyway. Uh, it's not always the direct family that we are reincarnated to um, from the Norse sources. Here are a list of a few sagas where a person basically on their deathbed asks for their name to be given to a specific baby that was soon to be born. It was not necessarily in the family every time, but uh, usually somebody close by in the, in the tribe or, or just, you know, a kind of regional area, someone that was known. And this is the tradition that has been... You know, all throughout uh, Scandinavia, even until today, it's the tradition that the child be named after the great-grandparents who has recently passed away. This has been a Scandinavian tradition for the past, you know, how I don't know how long, we can't tell. It's been gone now in the past uh, one or two generations. I don't know why this is. Every culture in the world has beautiful traditional names that we can pass on to our kids. But here in Norway especially, people are giving their kids just stupid names that have nothing to do with them. Me included, by the way. I was supposed to be, you know, called after a great-grandfather, Håkon, but then my parents gave me a damn biblical name of Michael, so we don't even, Me too, and we don't even have any Christian people in our family at all, but we still call our children these uh, biblical names. Um, anyway, that's about it for the written sources, but um, we can speak a bit about some uh, archaeological evidence that points to reincarnation. A big clue about uh, reincarnation that archaeologists uh, kind of theorize is this act of entering the burial chamber or grave um, and either taking or moving around some of the objects or skeletons in there. It's done in many places in the world um, that, uh, that believe or s still believe in reincarnation. We can't say this is for sure 100% evidence, but... It's done a lot in Scandinavia. Whenever we look at these burials from the Viking Age or before, we see a lot of uh, um, uh, examples of these burial mounds being broken into and things moved around or taken out. It's also mentioned in uh, a lot of the sagas, um, but the purpose of it is not 100% clear why this was done every time. Some of it probably for some reincarnation ritual, but um, uh, we can't be 100% sure that's what it is every time. Uh, some other evidence that archaeologists are um, basically sure about, pretty convinced, is that we find a lot of uh, graves of people buried in this, you know, fetal position, uh, representing how the baby lays in the mother's womb uh, when it's about to be reborn. Again, we find this all over the world, and in Scandinavia too. Uh, people believe it's evidence of reincarnation. Um, again, not 100% proof, but it's, they're, they're pretty certain. But uh, either way, all the texts and other evidence we have, we know the uh, Norse and Germanic tribes believed in reincarnation. Uh, the question is not whether they believed in reincarnation or not. The question is, you know, how long did this belief continue? Every source you know, kind of suggests that this belief started to disappear in the late Viking Age, and for sure by the time Christianity came in, it was definitely not a widespread belief anymore. But uh, remember, if you wrote or, or preached about reincarnation or anything pagan at all after Christianity came in and received power, you would be burned at the stake and killed. So of course we're not going to hear any stories about the belief in this, uh, because it would not have been allowed. But in my opinion, I don't think this belief ever truly stopped. I mean, in Scandinavian folk tales and other history, we find things alluding to reincarnation all the way up until the 1800s, actually. Uh, was it widespread? No, it would have probably only been believed in, in, in very small, remote villages. But yeah, I do think this belief uh, uh, lasted a lot longer than originally thought. So those are the sources. Um, I'll speak a bit more. The myths, like I mentioned, it, these are the sources that basically 100% confirm the belief in reincarnation, but uh, most of the myths and most of other things we can read about in the sagas, like, subtly allude to it if you look deep enough, and that's what I do on this channel, and I'm going to be looking into a lot more of these uh, uh, very soon. So, that's it for today. Vi ses nästa gång.